Hey everybody, welcome back. Sean here from BoardParacord.com and Paracord.com and today I want to show you how to make the four strand round braid into a necklace. Um, you can also make this into a bracelet or a key fob but I want to show you the necklace portion because I want to show you these. These are the breakaway clasps. These go on the back of the neck and they're designed to break apart and release the necklace if somebody's arm or something gets in there and that just prevents somebody get, from getting hurt or getting choked. Um, so let's get started. I have six feet of acid brown. We're just going to set that aside. And then I also have six feet of yellow. And what I did is I found the center point, which was right here. And I cut it. So I actually have two pieces, three feet of each. So six feet of yellow and six feet of brown. And the yellow is cut in half. All right. So the first thing we want to do is get one end here. And I want to start with the end, which got the extra little piece here in the middle. I want to I want to save the shorter piece. If you look at these sideways, I want to save the shorter piece toward the other end. So at the end of this video, that'll come back into play. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to cut the end off of this one, and I want to gut about two inches of paracord out of there and the reason for this is so that I can get both pieces of paracord through the buckle so we're just gonna cut this so I, what I did is I pulled out about about an inch and a half two inches of paracord from the inside of the the yellow and we're gonna cut this off All right, get those out of the way. And then we're going to just tuck those back inside by pinching about a foot back and then sliding it through your fingers. And I can tell that right there is where my cut is. This is just the outer sheath from here on. Okay, so what I want to do now is melt the end here and roll it in my fingers. And now what we're going to do is just put this through the end of the buckle. So you want to go from the outside to the in. And what that does is that allows us to have a little extra room for the, for the next piece of paracord to go through there. If you don't do this, you will have a really hard time getting this paracord to go through. It's already kind of, kind of snug anyway, even with the gutted paracord. But there it goes. So I'm just going to pull a little through. Now when I pull this one through, I want to make sure that... I get the the cut the cut paracord inside is right here so I want to make sure we're going past that and then I'm going to cut that that piece off again actually I'm going to cut oh well, no I'll cut this one <laughs> sorry about that okay so I'm just going to cut off the section of just the the outer the outer shell oh I got a piece of paper flying in my face okay there we go Okay, so now I have paracord on the inside of both of these. And to keep this from going back inside on itself, or you know, pulling back through that hole there, all I'm going to do, and I want to get my piece of paper over here, I'm going to melt the ends here. And I'm going to let them kind of... Oh, those are on fire right now. Well, sorry about that. I had to break away because I had a customer walk in. Um, and right before I left, I had basically melted these together, and then they stuck to this paper when I got up. And uh, when I pulled them off, they, they broke apart of each other. So I think they'd be okay by themselves like that. I don't think they'd pull through. But I do want to just stick these back together real quick. And one way to do that is to heat them up, and then just stick them together. And let them, them kind of cool like that. Now you want to make sure that this this melted part is small enough to get inside of the first hole here so that it gets tucked inside. And so you're just going to pull these in just like that and because they're melted together that melted portion is bigger than the hole and it will not pull back through. So that's what you're looking for. So you have a nice solid connection in there and this is, we'll get this out of the way and this is where we start to do our braid. And the nice thing about this braid is that 
you are going to do it to the desired length and then stop and then I'll show you at the end how to to fit to uh, finish it. So take your your other six feet of your other color, put the two ends together, and then run everything through your fingers so that you can find the center point right there. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the yellow in one hand, one in the other. The center point's going to go right at the center, and you're going to have one color off to the right and one off to the left. And those are going to cross. So you kind of have an up. So you have two on the right and two on the left. You want the buckle facing up, and all we're going to do is you're going to work with one color at a time, and they're going to cross each other underneath. And the way that I like to remember it is that you take your left one behind, your right one in front of each other. So if you can see this, my left one went behind, so it's on the back side and the right one is in front. Okay? And then kind of cinch them tight, just like that. Now, the left one on that last one was in the back, so now the right one, but the other color, goes in the back. So it's always left back, right back, left back, right back. So now we do right to the back. Get that out of there. So right to the back side left to the front and bring that over. So they're just kind of swapping sides right there. And then you want to just kind of even everything up. These first couple are the hardest. But once you get it, they'll look nice and uniform. Okay, so you're back to where we started now. So we have one on the right. Actually, we have two yellow and brown and two on the left, yellow and brown. Okay, so we did left back and then we did right of the other color back now we do yellow toward the back and the on the left and then the right one goes in the front just like that and kind of get everything situated there pull it tight okay then the right back and you want to kind of hold on to everything while you're doing this otherwise it gets out of hand a little bit and then the left goes in the front. And pull it tight. And you can kind of see what we're starting here. Okay, so I like to hold on to it just like this. You got your three fingers kind of holding everything, and then your pointer and thumb are kind of controlling the movements. Okay? So I just did the brown, so now I'm on the um, now I'm on the yellow. So yellow, so we go left back right in the front grab hold of everything and cinch it up just like that all right now we're on the brown side so the right back and the left side is in the front there we go so when you switch colors you also switch which side goes behind so we did right and right brown back. Now we're going to do yellow left back. And the right side goes in the front. Just like that. And you can kind of adjust that as you go. And now you can kind of see it. Alright, so we did yellow. So now we're on brown right back. So you just take that towards the back. The left side comes toward the front, kind of cinch them, there you go. Left side back, the yellow, right side in the front. So they're basically just switching, switching places, so this yellow will end up here and so forth. And what they're doing is they're kind of twisting around. Well, no, that's kind of confusing. I, I won't go over that. Um, but anyways, you just want to make sure that this cord, your left yellow, always goes kind of that way. 
and your right yellow always goes this way. So just remember left, back, right, back. And then each time you do it, you're flipping colors. I, I, th I think that's probably the easiest way to remember this. Um, and you can always tell what color you're on by flipping it over. If you have yellow on the top, that means you're going to do brown next. And then if you just remember that brown goes back on the right side, you really can't mess this up. And once you get used to this, these go really fast. Um, especially if you can, you know, keep everything under control. You should be able to get these done pretty quick. But as you can see, this is really great. This is this would even be good for horse tack to do some kind of like reins out of these. Real cool design. I'm gonna finish this up and I'll be back to show you how to finish it up with the other side of the buckle. Alright, so I wanted to make sure that the ending of this video was exactly perfect for you guys because the way that I did it before, and I did a video on it, but it just was not what I what I normally do. It was not up to the standards that I have. And I'm sure that you have also. So what I did is I cut the end off of what I previously did. I unraveled it. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit better way to do this. It does include, or it does involve having a glue gun, which I've never used a glue gun on this stuff. And I tried to wrap my head around different ways on ending this, but the glue gun was really the best way that I could come up with. Um, so what I've done here is I've unraveled about four inches back. Um, I already gutted about an inch worth of paracord here, and that's just so I can get it through the end of this. So I'll do that with this one. I've got about an inch showing here. So we're just going to cut the center strands off. Now if you don't do this, you will not be able to get it through your breakaway buckle. We'll get these guys out of the way. Alright, now I need to fuse these two ends together real quick. Just real quick. just so that I can get it through this here. So you're just going to put it on the way that it clips on to the other end. So you basically unclip it there and just rotate it over to your cords. I'm going to grab the end there. See, it fits through real nice until it gets to the cords that are on the inside of the paracord. And then you just got to tug on it a little bit. So once you do that, make sure that you're your browns are crossed through the inside of that loop right there so just as if you were tying it still and then just slide and it's going to be tight you're going to really have to kind of tug on it just slide that down until you can't really pull any more through and what you're going to end up doing with these browns is cutting and singeing them right there but first what I want to do is make sure that that's nice and tight, which it is. And then we're just going to drop some hot glue right down in the inside of this buckle on that side. Flip it over and drop a dot or two on the inside of that side. You want to make sure not to hit the top rim because the buckle actually has to fit inside of that rim. So you want to make sure to get the, the glue all the way down. And one way I'm going to help doing to do this is just to so that it doesn't kind of move anywhere is I'm going to clip this on right there and that'll help me kind of control it a little better. And I've already got my glue gun heated up. Now this glue gun is way too big for what I'm doing right now, but we're going to try it. Hopefully I don't hit that rim there. Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> Alright, let's just push that glue down in there. With this guy. Might have to drop it down in there. There are smaller glue guns. Actually, what I can do is just put the nozzle right down inside of there. And now I didn't even hit it. I got a lot of glue down in there. I didn't even hit the rim. So... If it helps, just put the nozzle right down in there. And if we have to, we can peel that out of there, right on the rim. Looks like we have a little, little on the rim there. All right, now I'm just going to let that dry right there. And I'm going to go ahead 
while that's drying, let me get the glue gun out of here. Um, while that dries on that side, I'm going to go ahead and singe this side. And you want to be really careful not to melt your buckle on this. So I grabbed my um, my dual flame lighter and my smoothing tool. There we go, nice and smooth. Now this is going to be on the back of the neck, so you want to make sure that that is really nice and smooth. Um, I really hope I'm focused. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I think we're we're nice and dry on that side. So I'm just going to flip this over. Do this. Flip this over this way. Like that. Stick the glue gun nose right down in there. There we go. It doesn't take much. I'm just going to use my needle nose again to um, kind of push that glue in there. There we go. And I can feel the outside of this buckle is nice and hot, which means I know I got glue down there. And you're going to have some that's like kind of stringing out of there. You can clean that up when you're done. All right. So let's cut this side. lighter here. Now if you have a triple flame lighter it might be kind of hard. You might have to use just one of the flames to kind of pinpoint it. Um, because that buckle is right there you just got to be really careful not to hit that buckle or it'll melt. There we go nice and smooth there. I think I can undo the forceps here and I can I can still feel that that's really hot inside of there but that that cord isn't moving now so that, that's good. All right, so we're gonna just clean this up a little bit. And what I was gonna do, I was gonna cut these and singe them, and actually I, th I think I am going to do that. Um, but because that glue is in there, I don't really think you need to worry about that too much. I'm just afraid that if I singe this now, we're gonna end up sticking it right to the to the side of that. I don't want to do that. All right, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Actually, I think we did pretty good. I might have melted my buckle just a little, but all in all, I think I think I think we're good. Yep. Now that's not moving. That gives you a real nice Make sure this still clips in. And it might take a couple, but it will. Yeah, I've got glue in there, so you're gonna have to. You might have to clean that up just a little bit. There it goes. We're clipped in, and now we're unclipped. So you got a little bit of glue residue on, on this side. So it'll take a couple times to get that glue out of there on the edge. Um, but once it's done, I mean that is a nice clean look. Much better than the last one I did. Um, the only way you can tell where it starts or ends is by these little these little melted spots right here. Um, but that's that's it. Um, thanks for being patient with me. I know I've spent a couple days trying to figure out, figure the ending of this out, um, but I think I got it. And uh, let me know what you think. If you come up with another way, let me know. You can email me at boardparacord at gmail .com. And also check out the uh, the Facebook group facebook.com slash groups slash paracord on that's where i hang out that's where everybody hangs out and shows off their work so until next time paracord on